Greetings, Otaku Faithful. Thank you for joining me again this week. Once again, it's Larry Williams, OAW Commander in Chief, and I'm here to bring you yet again another Thundercats episode review right here on Otaku Assemble Weekly. Now, I know in my last Thundercats, in the Thundercats series premiere review that I did last week, at the end of the video, I asked you guys to vote for whether or not you wanted to see weekly Thundercat episode reviews. And while the requests I got for the weekly reviews were not as much as the previous requests I got for the weekly movie reviews, I still decided that because last week's review got such a high reception, I was going to go ahead and knock out another episode review. And if this review does as well as that one did, then I'll highly consider picking the series up to review on a weekly basis. So with that said, I'm here to bring you my review of Thundercats Episode 3 entitled Ramlek Rising. Now, pretty much, long story short, what this episode is about. At the beginning of the episode, we see that Lionel and Gang, you know, they're, they're dealing with the aftermath of the events that took place in the first two episodes with uh, Mom Ra's resurrection, if you will. And the, you know, the lizards, their attack on uh, Thundera. So pretty much Lionel decides that he wants to go on the hunt for Mom Ra. Which took me by surprise because I was a little confused at the end of last week's episode. Because I was under the impression that Lionel and gang were actually being hunted by Mom Ra. I thought they were on the run. But apparently not. So, you know, Lionel, he's, he's pretty freaking adamant about finding Mom Ra and doing away with him despite the reluctancy of uh, Tig uh, Tigra and Chitara but they decide to go ahead follow Lionel anyway and so it their their hunt for Mamra takes them to this desert now in the pro in the process of heading on this little hunt they run into Wiley Cat and Riley Kit who I am enjoying a lot in this series so far because the way these characters have been rewritten for this new series, they've been aged down to about what six or seven, maybe eight years old. But they're they're a pair of mischievous little kittens, you know. They're kids, and it seems like everything they do, they are constantly at play. Just how like kittens are in in in, in real life, you know. If you see a if you see a pair of kittens, they're constantly playing. And that's what I love about those characters. You know, they they really they really do a good job of lightening the serious tone that the series takes um, at certain points. So pretty much, Wiley Cat and Wiley Kit join up with Lionel and Gang, despite Lionel's you know uh, reluctancy to have them around. So their hunt for Mom Ra first brings them into this desert, which they get. They reach the, what's called the Desert Sea, which is exactly how it sounds. It's a sea in the middle of the desert. And they wind up getting strung up on this pirate ship with these fishmen. I know, right? You, you get the pun? Uh, those of you who catch that reference. But yeah, it's pretty much um, a crew of fishmen pirates. And in, in being on their ship, they, find, they meet the captain... And they find out that the captain has an obsession with this this monster called the Ramlack. And what the Ramlack is, is pretty much it's a, a kraken. Um, but when we finally get to see the Ramlack, it kind of looks... Well, actually, no, it does look like... It looks like a kraken. I mean, that's pretty much what it is. Anyway, the Ramlack is notorious. It has a, 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 a unrelenting reputation for consuming the homeland of these fishman pirates because apparently they were the denizens of this this oasis in the middle of the desert and you know he he pretty much consumed their homeland not only that he took the captain's lake now if you've getting if you're getting the reference yes this episode is highly influenced by the story of Moby Dick you know with captain uh captain Ahab and his obsession with the beast and this this that and the other this captain, this character is no different. But what's interesting is that Lionel gets swept up in this captain's pursuit of the Ram. Like, like he wholeheartedly, he damn near becomes the captain's first mate. But we find out early on that the captain has very little regard for his crew. As far as he's concerned, they're all disposable because none of them have 
the gall that he does, you know? So, we find out that later on in the episode, the same thing occurs to Lionel. Because Lionel gets this, this just disregard for his teammates, for the rest of the Thundercats. And we see that when he decides to steer them straight into a storm after the Ramlack. But we find, but we do see that in the course of the battle against the Ramlack, Lionel, he sees the mistakes that he's made. He starts to value his teammates. He starts to value their lives. And we see that this is a lesson learned. If Lionel is to become the leader of the Thundercats, this is a lesson that he needs to learn. And at the end of the episode, it seems like he walked away with that lesson. You know, you don't, you don't, you don't just disregard the life of your teammates. You know, you have to value that. But this episode closes with, we see Mumra, he pretty much is interrogating Jaga because they captured Jaga to find out exactly where the Book of Omens is. And while Jaga put up a very, very brave front, um, it couldn't be helped. Mamra used some type of sorcery where he pretty much put Jaga inside of this, like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure how to describe it. It's more of like this enchanted lamp. And the magic in the lamp was able to force Jaga to show them, to point to exactly where the Book of Omens is. And so, at the end of this episode, we pretty much, now we know that Lionel and his group, they have to find the Book of Omens. And they have to search for it. Whereas Mamra has a direct path to where it is. So now it's pretty much a race to find the Book of Omens. So this episode, I mean, it was it was pretty well done. Um, it it was one of those filler episodes where it's like a side story. It doesn't really play a pivotal role in the in the main in the main course of the story arc. You know, it's, it's one of those side stories which I didn't think we would get until later on in the series. But this episode did pay, play its role because, like I said, we saw that Mamra now knows the location of the Book of Omens, or at least he has a guide to find it, rather. And we know that Lionel, you know, Wiley Cat and Kit, they've joined the group, and Lionel's becoming more of a leader. So, while this episode, yes, side story, but it served its purpose. And with that said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to wrap up this review. Don't want to make this too long. Want to thank you guys for joining me again this week. As always, comment, rate, subscribe. And guys, let me know once again, would you like weekly Thundercat reviews? The best way you can do that is pass, pass this video along, pass the word. Let's see if this video can do as well as the, as the first vid did, and I'll consider it. But with that said, thanks for joining me again this week. By all means, stick around later this weekend. We got... Favorite heroes, favorite villains for the series Supernatural. I will be doing my favorite hero and favorite villains from that series. And we also have my DC Comics rant coming later this weekend. What the fuck is DC Comics doing? We will find out and we will address that in the rant. But with that said, this is Larry Williams, OAW Commander-in-Chief. I'm signing off and I'll catch you cats later. Peace.